Hi, everybody. Hi. Hey, post lunch, wake up. <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you for participating in that. I appreciate it. My name is Sean Bouchard. Uh, I'm Elizabeth Swenson. And I'm Laird Malamud. And we are from the University of Southern California uh, and the Collegeology Games Project. Um, the Collegeology Games Project is a, uh, a combined effort between the Game Innovation Lab at USC and the USC, uh, sorry, the Pulleys Center for Higher Education in the USC Rossier School for, higher, uh, for, for Education. Um, and it's a suite of games uh, designed to address um, college knowledge and uh, college access among middle school and high school students. So we're going to go through our current work to date very quickly, and then Laird's going to take over and talk a little bit about funding and sustainability. So as Sean mentioned, Collegeology is a suite of games, and I'm going to go through the games we're working on now and sort of where we're heading in the future very quickly. So our first game is Application Crunch. When Rossier came to us at first and said, hey, let's make this game, we actually came in with sort of a slower and lower funded model. And so we decided to work on paper first. And there are a couple advantages to working on paper other than the fact that you can iterate and get it out to classrooms as fast as possible. There's no teacher training when it comes to technology. But it's also uh, just, uh, it's really fun for us because most of our digital games start on paper anyway. So it served as initially a prototype that we eventually wanted to produce into a product, which is Application Crunch. This is a game for high school students focused on sort of the minutia of applying for college, uh, getting into college, figuring out scholarships uh, to afford college, and also a, a light sense of college fit, what college is right for you. And the main mechanic on the, of this game is a timeline of deadlines. It's modeling sort of this, this point in time in your senior year, and every round of play, a new deadline is falling out of play. So it's about choosing which uh, Deadlines are right for the character that you're playing in this game, and then leveling up your stats and extracurriculars, getting leadership positions, personal stories, and letters of rec uh, in order to prepare yourself well for the kind of uh, schools or scholarships you want to apply to. Um, we've actually printed uh, for a first run of 1,000 of these card games, and then recently did a second edition of 5,000 on a model of uh, selling 4,000 and giving 1,000 away to um, uh, qualifying organizations or individuals. Available on Amazon right now, those yeah. computers, please. Exactly, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so as I mentioned before, Collegeology Games is a suite of games. It's more than just the Application Crunch product. This is our website. The game is available to buy on the website, as Laird said, also on Amazon. Um, but the website is also meant to be sort of a central repository for all of our uh, information about all of our games, um, which of which the second one is called Mission Admission. Mission Admission is essentially a Facebook adaptation of, uh, of Application Crunch. It focuses on the same target audience, high school juniors and um, sophomore juniors and seniors, mm -hmm. um, and is about specifically the college application process. Uh, and it looks kind of like this. You may see some things that are familiar if you play uh, Facebook games. Um, we used sort of the tropes of the genre uh, to try to capture the idea of time management. Um, so just like the card game is based around the central feature of a timeline of deadlines that are sort of con constantly coming up, the Facebook game, Mission Admission, is also based around this calendar of deadlines, the difference being that the deadlines are in real time. So the game takes place, plays out over the course of a week, and over that week, you have uh, sort of real-time deadlines that you have to meet. You have to actually manage your time uh, in order to do that. One of the really interesting things that we were able to do uh, by digitizing the game, by taking it out of the card game format and making it a, a digital game, uh, is spatialize it. Obviously, the card game has to be very abstract. Um, but in this, in Mission and Mission, we could have um, rooms that represent different things that you're doing, activities, and little characters who, uh, who have cute animations that, that you know, they enact, uh, which has actually been really important to a lot of the kids that we talk to when we take this out to schools. Um, so Mission and Mission uh, is actually now available. It's been launched. Uh, it's up on Facebook. I encourage you all to go to Facebook and search for it, Mission and Mission, uh, and check it out and give us feedback. Um, 
we have been, we've already taken it out to uh, a number of schools in the Los Angeles area through our contacts, uh, at, or, sorry, through the contacts of our friends at the Polius Center. Um, they have contacts in a number of uh, LAUSD schools, and so we're currently working on a pilot study uh, or an initial study, I guess, of 300 students playing the game um, over the course of several weeks. Uh, and we're in the process of collecting data now. Um, I don't have a lot of interesting stuff to show you about the data, but really this. Like yeah. Oh. So uh, this is just this is a slide that shows the uh, output from a visualization tool that we have that allows us to see um, what a gameplay session is like for a student uh, who's playing the game. Um, I'm just gonna skip right by that. So this is the product we have out right now. We're working now on a, a sort of, <laughs> thank you, we really appreciate it. Maybe see a little better. A third product is tentatively called Future Bound. It's a working title for a game for middle schoolers. And unlike the first two games, which are sort of complementary uh, products for high school students, one that's really great to bring home, the card game, or in classrooms with low technology, and one that's uh, good at a high technology environment, Mission and Mission, Future Bound is looking at uh, a middle school audience. And because middle schoolers are a little further away from this process and thinking about sort of FAFSA or uh, what scholarship I got going to apply to is useful, but perhaps perhaps a little too far forward. We're taking the opportunity with Future Bound to think about aspirations towards careers and where college plays in that pathway, and also about self-advocacy and efficacy. What can you do as a middle schooler now to take the things you love to do, treat them as skills, as superpowers, at leaning forward to what you want to be when you grow up? And so one thing I didn't mention, but is very relevant to this process, how we got to that sort of point, is that with every game that we start, we begin by talking with our target demographic. Most good game companies, organizations do play tests, but we do something a little differently. We begin our process by bringing in about 15 to 20 students in the age group we're interested in, and we spend a month with them teaching them about game design. It's a way for us to stealth uh, evaluate what they're thinking in this process, asking them to make games about the topics we're really interested in. So instead of sitting them in a room and being sort of the awkward adult going, so what do you think about college kids? Uh, we can instead say, okay, here, we let us teach you all these cool things about games, let's talk about games, and now make us a game about college. And it, it reveals a lot about their values. And I have a bunch of really cute anecdotes that I don't think we have time for, but please ask me about them later. Oh, yes. We find that iterating in paper is a lot quicker, even when we have a month with students. Um, the sort of build up to getting to them a place where they understand ideas about mechanics and flow and uh, narrative in games uh, and having them mod their own games, it's fastest to get them working on paper. It's like a game jam. Absolutely. Except they do. We actually have an application process. These are kids who apply to be a part of this program and who uh, are amazing and show up pretty much every day. They're, yep. they're, they're, they're great. We, we ran it with high schoolers twice now and middle schoolers once, and it's been fantastic. And so with this game, we've begun with some early uh, paper prototype, prototypes. We've gone back to do focus tests with uh, students at two middle schools to talk about what are the kinds of careers and skills that you're really interested in, and how can we uh, sort of adapt that language, sort of broaden their understanding of their possibilities for the future. Because one of the things we came back with from our, uh, this junior design camp we did with middle schoolers is they have a very narrow idea, especially at um, the LAUSD schools, about the opportunities for their future. So part of the things we want this game to do is to expand that understanding a little bit. So you want to be a lawyer. There are lots of different kinds of lawyers. Or you want to be a pop star. There are lots of ways to make a career in music, that sort of thing. And so right now we're sort of in early production. I've got some concept art here to talk about sort of the main tension. So you're a middle school student and you want to do well and you're excited about things and you want, you're thinking about career. What are the tensions in middle school? And we've sort of brought it back from, influ from uh, the feedback from the kids on these ideas of uh, sort of your own personal insecurities and fear. So this game is all about thinking about what you want to be, taking these hypothetical skills and careers, turning them into superpowers to combat uh, sort of your real world sort of fears and anxieties about your future. This game is going to be, um, we're targeting iPod Touch, but also making it available uh, on the web. And very briefly, we also have a game for in the works that we're just beginning uh, sort of design on 
focusing again on high school students, Quantum College, totally work in, working title. Not going to be final title, but there it is anyway. Uh, and this game, this fourth game, will be focused on financial aid and college spo choice, specifically looking, okay, you get into a lot of colleges, how do you make the decision about what college to attend? What sort of personal, or personal qualities do you have that's going to determine, like, do you care about student to teacher uh, ratio? Do you care about the size of the school, where it's located? But also, what kind of aid are they offering, and what sort of effects do these choices have on your future? So one of the big things that's really important to us on the, on the project is, of course, doing this great work. We've had wonderful support from the Department of Education, uh, from the Gates Foundation, but it needs to live on um, because the mandate that when the School of Education came uh, over to the cinema school was around, hey, there's a real crisis in particularly income, lower income schools where you have a guidance counselor, one maybe for a thousand students, how are they going to learn about getting into college? And so the big idea that came out of this, and when we th try to think of this from a sustainability point of view, uh, because we can't use the word marketing plan. Nobody likes the word marketing plan, so we use sustainability plan. Um, that's, a, that's my secret code word for marketing plan. I come from the video game industry, so I, I had to come, we had to come up with a new word. The, um, what is, t is to then think about what is this, this still has to have a, a concept. And, and you heard Elizabeth and Sean talk about this a little bit in terms of their game design. But it really is the sweep is the big idea, which is that if, if you intervene late, it's really hard to catch the kids up because you, colleges, if they're, if they're college ready and they don't know what to do to get in college, they won't go. If they're college ready but they haven't specialized in anything, they don't have anything to talk about. One of the things that happens in mission admission, and I really do encourage you all to play, it's really, really fun. And, um, you know, and, and unlike other Facebook games, um, we're not yet making you pay anything. So <laughs> totally um, you could just play. <laughs> the, is, is that they have then nothing unique to talk about. So in the, in the game, one of the key features that comes out is you get personal stories. You do, you study, you play basketball, you do theater, you do electronics, and you'll get a story to help you write your essay because so many essays are written around moments that have happened in your high school career. But even thinking back to that, and this is why the middle school game is so important in the process, which is trying to drive that, say, go look for things that you're interested in. When you're interested in something, you gain power. That power may be to write a story, that power may be to do mathematics, that power may be to be awesome on the track team, um, and those things will form the basis of you going forward and give you that confidence. And so our big idea, and when we go to look to how we're going to sustain this, and we don't have the answer yet, so this, the, I'll give you the conclusion, is, is that pushing forward really three key features out of the big idea. One, that this is a, a suite of products that people will go through, and, and they will be connected in subtle ways, because we don't want to make them feel like sequels and that they can't enter admission admission, for example, if they haven't gotten to play the earlier games, but that there will be overlaps if they have. Two, that as you also heard, the kids are helping design these games. That's a big idea in this, and so that we know that when they get into kids' hands, they will resonate. It's not us looking back, um, you know, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, and going, what did I feel when I was a seventh grader? <laughs> um, it's much more, what are seventh graders saying now? So it's really fun for the kids. You, you, see the, you saw the pictures, you see them in the lab, and they're having a blast trying to figure out, you know, how to make these games. Um, hopefully one of their college essays someday that we'll be reading, you know, in the admissions committee for interactive, will, they'll have gone through this program. Um, and then the third thing is that it's, it's done with this combination. I think this is a, this hybrid model between the School of Education at USC Rozier and the Cinematic Arts School is a, it's very powerful. And, um, and I think that's a selling point for the products. The, so, the, so what do we have to do? So what, do we, what have we done? So one of the things we've been doing on, on the advisory side is typical budget stuff, typical schedule things. What do we need to go forward? Um, we found that when we went back and looked at our budget that there's there's no money for marketing that's put into the grants. This is stuff we have to raise on our own through other support. Um, one of our, our big ideas is there are lots of companies dealing with college services and less about the for-profit schools, um, but more because they have a sort of perspective, we think, but more about the services around um, colleges like textbook rentals, like, um, like admission services. And so one of our goals is to, is to reach out to those companies and see if hosting these games would be something that's beneficial for them. They would drive traffic to their sites, but great for us um, because of hosting costs and Facebook changes its, public, its privacy policy and we have to change stuff there and updates and things like that. Um, all of this is actually built on a foundation of knowing where we want to get to with the game slate. And that's 
rotates back into the big idea, which is we really feel we need to get all four games done, uh, two of which are pretty much done. So as I said, we've been walking around talking to, to various people. It's, it's, let's face it, it's not very fun to fund something that's done. Um, so this, the angle we're taking on it is that of the quality level, being associated with something of quality. And I think this has really informed every decision that's been made along the way on these projects. In terms of the animations, we, we weren't showing any videos, but we, we, could, we could bring them up afterwards and you can see them. It's like even down to the minutia of, of, of how the kid plays basketball in the game. It's just dribbles a little ball and stuff like that. Like we're very much thought through and iterated and put in front of kids because if it doesn't come off as quality to the kids and it doesn't come off as quality to additional funding, who's going to step up? Who wants to be associated with something that doesn't look awesome? And so that's another one of those key drivers for us, um, which keeps uh, pretty much them up all night uh, working <laughs> on these projects. Um, but it's, it's because we think that that will show through in terms of, of sustaining our ability to be online for three, four, or five years. Probably after that, at, at that point, it's, it's, it will be replaced by new versions of these things. And who knows, it will be on Facebook in five years or some <laughs> Facebook 2.0 or something like that. Um, but in ultimately coming back to this, one of the some models that we're seeing in this space would be to segregate some of the information between a free model that you give away to schools and, and then there's a paid model, which tends to focus a lot of its efforts around more affluent parents or, mi or, or, or middle income parents or schools that have technology bases perhaps greater than our original target. So we always come back and look at everything through this filter, which is what was our original idea and our, and our original idea, really the idea of Bill and Zoe and the team over at the Rosier School was how do we make a difference in the lives of kids who clearly can go to college, who should go to college, they represent a lot of the diversity in our schools in many ways, and are not being afforded that education and the chances to do it. And so we come back and always look at it from that point of view. And I think, I think because we do that, uh, we have a better chance of being successful um, because we, the, what the foundation was built upon will be ultimately what we're still trying to achieve. So that's kind of a little bit of our thinking about it. Um, and with that, uh, if you have any questions about the program or if we want to, I guess we could, if that has internet access, I guess we could even load up Facebook. I think we show. have a way to access yeah. the internet if we wanted. Yeah, so anyway. But thanks so much for coming and listening to us. And uh, yeah, we'll open it up for questions uh, before everyone dashes to the next talk. <laughs> Please. Any, any gaps, do you think, in your suite? Any uh, products that you dream of? <laughs> there, <laughs> yes. there are tons of products we would really? love to do. We've uh, talked a little bit internally um, about we'd love to see uh, what the elementary school game is. How do you introduce college at the earliest level? Uh, what is the game for transferring from a community college to a four-year institution? Yeah. Community colleges are great institutions. Uh, there's a lot of support for um, students in the communities we work with to go there, but there isn't a lot of support we found once they get there in order to move on to a four-year institution. Additionally, uh, you know, there's a, there's a need for a game uh, about retention through the first year of college. It's an yeah. extremely important year. Um, the parent piece. Yes. Yeah. Educating parents that college can be affordable and also thinking about uh, bio or multiple languages for these games. We, or, and also uh, expansions for the card games to fit very specific populations. We're forced to be a little general um, to reach as many students as possible, but what does a pack for the card game look like for uh, an undocumented student or foster youth? And actually, oh, along those lines, one of, one of our funding models, um, which we've not, we've just not gone out and pitched yet, <laughs> would be uh, localization of the game for very specific. So is there a, is, is there a, uni is there a Texas suite and where all of the sort of fictional schools are actually schools within the Texas mm -hmm. system, right. which could be quite powerful. Mm -hmm. um, and that also would be more relevant for, you know, if you think of the Houston School District, which is one of our largest and also one of our poorest, um, that may make it make a lot more sense that the schools that they're seeing are like, well, I, I'm not imagining going off, you know, to New England. That's not going to happen in my life. But I could possibly go to Austin, I mean, that could be a huge, huge win. Um, or there's a lot of a lot of very good schools in Houston too. So, so to answer your question, when we <laughs> early on in this process, we drew up a roadmap of all of the stuff that we wanted to there do. More too. And there's a lot <laughs> on it uh, that, that we, you know, we feel like we could really help with. Yeah, we've probably done it to you guys. Fantastic. Great. We love it. Yeah. Uh, but someone, I saw someone the, over uh, that yes, way. I think. 
Go ahead, please. Can I, can I go? Yeah. It seems like this is very geared toward white middle class students. So I don't know if I mean I, I hear you talking about maybe moving it, you know, to specialize for Texas or um, to specialize it in certain ways. But you could probably make it accessible to a lot more kids if it didn't assume. Like it, I, I work I, for the New York City Department of Education, and like there's this is like very. Uh, doesn't reflect the reality of the students that I work with. And there's this big push to get um, all kinds of kids from all kinds of backgrounds to go to college. And I honestly don't feel like I could use this the way it is to help those kids. Can you be more specific? Like what, what, what kinds of things did you see um, that makes it for him? The design of it, like the, design of it um, the assumption that there is a junior year. Um, but, I don't know, it just seems very... But, yeah, we, we, would, we would love more specific feedback, okay. absolutely, because it certainly is not the intent. So if we're coming off that way, that's, a, that's something that we haven't achieved. In fact, all the you actually don't play yourself in the game. I don't think we explained that, did we? No. no. So in the game, you actually are given a character, three to choose from each round. And so it's not you getting yourself into college more. You're the guidance counselor that's missing. And all of the, the, the choices tend to be um, of different nationalities and backgrounds. But I think what you're more re reacting to, maybe what you saw was in terms of what the school looks like. Um, I don't know, but so if we could get you to play it and we could get on the phone with you, that would be awesome. Wait, can, I, can I ask a follow-up question? Please, Robert, yeah, absolutely. So, so I, I, I think that's a, a really great thing to, to worry about. Yeah. Um, so related to that, might there, how are you guys thinking about the particular skills um, that kids, what does it mean to develop skills sure. that, that you need to go to college? Um, and, and so so that gets up somewhat at the game mechanics of mm -hmm. the game and how you, how you design mechanics for those skills. Absolutely. But, so it, it can, can you answer that question in the context of that comment? Like, how, how do you consider the kinds of skills that kids who, who may be disincentivized, mm -hmm. right, um, from, from going to college? That's a really good question. I mean, mostly it's in conversation with college, current college counselors and current teachers. We hold a lot of talks and meetings with them to get their opinion on what, sc what skills they think students, especially when preparing for the middle school game, students are not coming into ninth grade with, which is how we came up with the focus on self-advocacy. So a lot of the narrative of the game for middle school is about standing up for yourself and knowing that you have a place, sort of, that you can change the path you're taking through education. So self-advocacy stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But also in terms of individual schools, as again, talking to the teachers, we had this idea of what a perfect skill set would be for the middle school game, for example. <laughs> it turns out it is, not, it is not what the teachers were interested in, uh, sort of advocating for that age group. Um, so we end up sort of uh, abstracting out again to the idea of, I think in the middle school game, we're talking about um, sort of, uh, uh, the social aspect, um, utilizing your social networks and considering that a skill. Technology being a skill, not thinking of it as math and science, but how do you utilize technology. For us, we talk about academics in terms of curiosity. Um, and then there's also performance, which covers not only the arts, but also just self-representation. And then and, and athletics. Uh, yes, that also is part of performance and art things because the students are really interested in athletics as a part of their future. But when we talk about sort of the opportunities in uh, professional uh, athletics, it's a very narrow path. So how can we talk about the skills you need to be a good athlete in a way that's applicable on a larger scale? Um, and, and and similarly, I mean, it's really it, the the um, middle school game Future Bond is a good case study of this. Uh, that we try to be very specific in the, the you know, career opportunities that we present in the game because we want to give information about the specific possible career opportunities. But we also relate them to other opportunities that exist in a similar space and always back to these sort of general categories that you can think of. Uh, so, you know, in, in the game you may uh, have a, a career path that is, um, you know, a, a pilot or a, uh, I'm trying to remember what our career paths are. <laughs> like a, a musician, like a or rock a music, star. Or a musician, yeah, or a rock star. Uh, but then those exist sort of in the context of, uh, you know, a, a performance sort of oriented 
skill set or a uh, creativity oriented skill set that then we can sort of give you other options. Here, please go ahead. So, um, so we're working on um, a project where we're looking at um, comparing the costs and the benefits of pursuing various types of post-secondary um, education. So yes. It doesn't have to be four-year college. Mm -hmm. Right. So how much of the interplay in your game is related to a four-year degree versus some other types of post-secondary training um, that might be community college, some sort of <laughs> degree or Absolutely. maybe even um, lower than that? Right. That's a really good question and something that actually comes up a lot with us. The focus of the Rossier School is to get students into four-year uh, institutions just because the retention rate has been higher. But that isn't to say that there isn't value in a certification program. And we try to model that in mission admission through the various deadline opportunities. Community college, because that's usually on a rolling admission system, is always in every timeline and it's available. Uh, at sort of the the, the lower, you, you have to turn in the application, you can get in, that, that's right. definitely a path. And then also we do model certain trade schools um, in the abstract again as sort of representations for some of those two year opportunities. So this, it's something that, you know, we have kind of highly abstracted in our previous games. In the fourth game that is about financial aid literacy and yeah. about college choice, it's something that we're gonna be focused much more on, what the difference between different uh, options are. So we have time probably for two more, is that Ling? Uh, probably one more. One, okay, oh, okay, one more. I think you were. Okay, um, I, I was wondering in terms of your um, choice of design mechanic, uh, with, with, the, with the students playing the character, mm -hmm. it wasn't clear to me, were they given the story or did they get to choose? I guess I'm wondering how much the students are identifying mm -hmm. with, with the characters they're playing and, and in terms of buy-in, how much of, I guess, fidelity, do they, do they really feel like what they're doing in the game is something useful outside, or do they just feel like it's within this game space, game world? So with the mission admission, you're choosing between three randomly generated characters every week. And within the card game, you're drawing characteristics that make up a character from some random decks. And we made this choice in partnership with our uh, sort of um, data analysis team and with the education team talking about ideas of safety because actually those two games, the card game and the Facebook games, are actually really difficult. It's hard to get into college and we wanted to make sure that there was room to experiment freely and to fail safely. So you don't fail at getting your goal or your person uh, into college. You might have a stumbling block for this character who wants to do this other thing uh, and but then you get to try again next week. So there's still sort of this tension about, oh man, I didn't get that scholarship, or oh man, they didn't get into this school. But it isn't me, and it isn't reflective of my own potential for to fail in this system. But, but to, to fill that in a little, you do have a choice of three. The pieces of data you're given when you're making that choice, you see a, a character, uh, on the mission and mission, let's use that. You see the, uh, an illustration of the character. You know, obviously, their gender from the illustration. Um, whether they're from a single parent or a two-parent household, the income level in general terms, and also what their interest is. So, um, so if they want to be president, that's one of the things that comes up. If they want to be a research scientist, they want to be a nurse. You'll see those things. And then the way the game mechanics work is that there are certain there are certain things you're told like to play this character, you want to get level four of academics, or you want to be good at dance. And so that gives you a little bit of a guide. So those things. So in making your choice. You are that you are still making the the player is still making a connection choice between one of the three. Hopefully, one of the three randomly generated has enough in it that you want to play the character that week. And we usually find that that's the case. And then that helps inform like, well, if you want to be a nurse, there's a nursing school, so maybe you should go for that. Okay, what does nursing school require? It requires tech arts. It requires um, service because of compassion, things like that. And so you, those are the those are the areas that you would probably better off, be better off leveling up in the game to get into that school so and then I think uh, I think we're, we're out of time but we'll be around for questions more and <laughs> please go check it out on the website um, both at Collegeology Games mm -hmm. and at Mission Mission on Facebook thanks for coming <laughs> <laughs>